You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. And now, a word from our sponsor, SpyCloud, the cybercrime analytics leader. SpyCloud disrupts cybercrime by telling you what criminals know about your business and your customers, so you can take action to prevent ransomware, session hijacking, account takeover, and online fraud. SpyCloud constantly recaptures and analyzes new data from the criminal underground, including credentials, session cookies, and PII siphoned from malware-infected devices. With knowledge of the specific exposed data criminals have in hand from InfoStealer malware on managed and unmanaged devices, security teams can respond with a more efficient and effective process called post-infection remediation that fits seamlessly into existing incident response frameworks. Get SpyCloud's post-infection remediation guide outlining the seven steps for preventing a malware infection from becoming a full-blown ransomware incident. Visit spycloud.com slash cyberwire. That's spycloud.com slash cyberwire. And we thank SpyCloud for sponsoring our show. The word is rootkit. Spelled R is in Rami Malik, O is in obscure, O is in open source, T is in Terry Colby, K is in killer app, I as in IRC, and T as in Telnet. Definition A clandestine set of applications designed to give hackers access and control over a target device. Example sentence. Memory rootkits hide in the system's RAM or random access memory to avoid detection. Origin and context. In 1984, Ken Thompson, the co-founder of the original Unix system with Dennis Ritchie back in the 1960s, published a paper in the communications of the ACM called Reflections on Trusting Trust. As a thought experiment, he devised a way to alter the C compiler that shipped with all Unix systems at the time. When the compiler noticed an administrator recompiling the login program, the compiler would insert additional functionality to not only accept the password of the user trying to get in, but also a second password that only the hacker knew about. When reviewers analyzed the code for the login program later, they would see no signs of this additional functionality. Mr. Thompson essentially invented the first rootkit some years before we saw the first one in the wild. According to Vince Polston at Malware Fox, Lane Davis and Riley Dake wrote the first rootkits in 1990 that targeted the Sun operating system, a Unix-based architecture. Greg Hoagland wrote the first public Windows rootkit called NT Rootkit in 1999. The first Mac OS rootkit appeared in 2009. The word root originally referred to the admin account on Unix and Linux systems. Today, it means the admin account on any system. Kit refers to the software components that implement a collection of tools. Modern rootkits hide their presence using some of the lower abstraction layers of the operating system, which makes them hard to detect. Generally, hackers try three different techniques to install rootkits on the target device. Number one, hooking or injecting malicious code into the application's execution flow. The Zeus Panda Banking Trojan performs keylogging on the victim's machine by hooking the Windows operating system functions, translate message, and WM keydown. Number two, DLL injection, or installing a dynamic link library, or DLL, into a running process address space. There is a module in the Equation Group's Grayfish Cyber Espionage Platform that uses DLL injection. Or number three, kernel object manipulation, or modifying the kernel structure and bypassing the kernel object manager to avoid access checks. The Russian DRU's unit 26165, AKA Fancy Bear, AKA APT28, and AKA Strontium, 
uses a Drover Rub tool set that includes a Linux kernel module root kit. And by the way, Drover Rub means woodcutter in Russian. Finally, rootkits target various operating systems functionality like applications, the kernel, the boot process, memory, and firmware. Nerd reference. In season one, episode one of Mr. Robot, Gideon played by Michael Gill, Elliot played by Rami Malek, Angela, played by Portia Doubleday, and Lloyd, played by Aaron Takahashi, are in the office at 3 in the morning trying to fend off a denial-of-service attack against their biggest client, Evil Core. Elliot discovers several rootkits deployed on their client's servers. For help. Wait, what? I don't think this is just a DDoS attack. I think they got a rootkit sitting inside the servers. What's a rootkit? Sorry, it's malicious code that completely takes over their system. It, it, it could delete system files, install programs, viruses, worms. How do we stop it? That's the thing. It's fundamentally invisible. You can't stop it. All of their servers are timing out. None of them are coming back up. Yeah, that's because every time we restart a server, the virus replicates itself during boot up and crashes the host. And now, a word from our sponsor, Zscaler, the leader in cloud security. Cyber attackers are using AI in creative ways to compromise users and breach organizations. In a security landscape where you must fight AI with AI, the best AI protection comes from having the best data. Zscaler has extended its zero-trust architecture with powerful AI engines that are trained and tuned by 500 trillion daily signals. Learn more about Zscaler Zero Trust plus AI to prevent ransomware and AI attacks. Experience your world secured. Visit zscaler.com slash zero trust AI. 